Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am sitting in the garden chatting to the camera, which is weird. It's very quiet here today. But I did move the olive tree and the apple tree around um, in last week. Yeah, last week's video, just to give like a little bit of privacy, a little bit of, so it just means I can film up here amongst my sunflowers, of which there are many, 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 many. But today is going to be a busy day in the garden because I need to plant my rose bushes that I bought recently. I need to plant my climbing hydrangea. I need to dig up the courgettes. I feel like they're at their end now. They're starting to take over. I'll show you in a second. Um, I need to collect some seeds. Yeah, I feel like I need a nice morning in the garden. Like it's cooled down a little bit because like the last few weeks, oh my God, it has been so hot. And as I know I said it before, um, like in Ireland, we're just not equipped for that. But I think as well, I think it's gonna change how we garden and like what plants we put where. But I'm kind of aware as to what works over in the border across the way. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna explain why I moved things around a little bit because yeah, it feels like a nice little bit of enclosure now. I don't feel as exposed talking to the camera. But let me give you a little update maybe. Yeah, update. Okay, so I moved the olive tree over onto this corner of the patio just because it was looking a little bit miserable against the fence. And like in the inside part here, earlier in the year, it looked like very baldy. But I think, first of all, I'm not sure if it was like from overwatering or underwatering, but I don't know if you can see there, we have like new little, fruit buds coming up there so she's she's okay i think i hope because <laughs> her leaves look a lot greener now as well and um, before they looked quite yellow so captain and i were kind of keeping tabs on each other as to like how like each other's olive tree was coming but i think she looks good lads so i'm hoping that this is like a nice location for her i also in last week i dug up like a good bit of the compost now the roots are like very what's the word like there's a lot of roots in there and um, so I wasn't able to dig down too much but I did take up like a lot of the top part maybe about like that much of the soil and kind of replaced it with new compost. I'm going to try and do lavender cuttings actually here because there's like a purple and a white lavender plant in there and then this is this is the poor apple tree. Now I definitely waited too long to pot that up or like repot it and um, it was very dry in the original pot and like you can see some of the leaves going crispy and curled and stuff so pretty much all the websites that I was looking at said that if your tree is underwatered or overwatered um, it could be a reason for the brown leaves now but I have a feeling it was from being underwatered so I have been kind of keeping an eye on it and when the soil gets uh, too dry like I kind of stick my fingers down and if like below two centimeters or two inches is dry I water it. These have come out as well these dahlias aren't they lovely? This one too. Now I would just like to show you that see not not that pot. This pot and this pot I bought for mam back in March for Mother's Day. And they're still, well now not going strong, but they're still going. And then I planted, I sowed these seeds, um, God, ages ago, back in spring. And they're called Spanish flags. I can't remember what the like official name is. And I put a couple here and I put one underneath kind of that pole there and they're starting to come up. So I'm kind of hesitant to dig them up because what I want to do is plant a rose like the yellow rose in the bottom of there yeah i need to cut back the lavender as well but i also want to try and take cuttings i followed this guy on, on tiktok and he was showing how to do it so hopefully i have some bits that are in there also see the sunflower like look going all the way along here like as i said i think in last week's videos all those are just from two plants all of those sunflowers <laughs> so my mission today is to at the bottom of here dig one of the plant one of the uh, pink roses I'll move that pot and plant another one and then hopefully have them grown up the arch and we will prune them in spring I need to cut back the sunflowers I'm gonna miss the height I'm not gonna lie but I'm gonna leave the ones that are still going here anyway that's what we're gonna do today and then I have a couple of extra courgettes on here see in if you can see in there but I'm gonna cut back uh, these plants because they're just, they're taking over. I have leeks in there that are um, kind of been stifled. I'd say we're gonna be able to harvest the corn pretty soon, but it is looking good. Also my, what are them things called? Brussels sprout plants are looking well. I thought that the caterpillars were chomping them to bits, but no, they're, they're doing well. Actually, I wanted to show you this border. So I love it from this angle here because it looks really full and like it's tumbling and everything. I think next year I will 
bring it out a little bit more and have a bit more structure to it because when you look at it from this angle it just looks a bit messy it looks a bit I don't know just not the way I wanted to look now I didn't think that I was going to have that many of the terracotta achilleas and um, I will actually I'm going to look up how to split them because I want to like plant more of them around the garden and I definitely will keep those rudbeckias they're perennials they should come back next year but I think I was saying to you before Monty Don says to like do your garden like plant your garden I suppose in a way that it's at the angles that you're going to see it so like we don't really stand here looking at it but but when we're standing at the back door we see it from here which I really like I love the tumbling part of it it just looks informal but what I'm thinking about doing is maybe if yeah if I bring out that border and put like a row of lavender it will kind of help support the plants in there but we'll see I need to do a little bit more research this is the garden from this angle now so you can see that the olive tree just gives a little bit of privacy and the same with the apple tree mom got cuttings of hydrangeas there from I don't know if it's her friend or her sister but they're coming on great so she's repotted them and I think we will plant them in the ground uh, next year the begonia there is just so vibrant it's gorgeous and then there is a like a smaller version oh she's pretty oh look at that flower that is gorgeous anyway enough chatting it's time to get to work Climbing hydrangea was very tough to um, plant. Well, that soil, it's like I got to a certain point and it was just so heavy. But at least that's there and hopefully that will take up loads of here. I know it's kind of quite, um, I don't know if you call it invasive. Maybe it is. I was just like a wall of hydrangeas. We'll see on this day, the 30th of August, if I regret that next year. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to tackle this area. So I'm going to cut down some of the sunflowers. Oh God, there's only gonna be a few left, but like I think next year if I grow sunflowers, I don't know if I'll grow them on the back wall, but it is kind of joyful looking out and seeing like just a wall of happiness. But I need to figure out how to stake them properly. So I'm gonna dig those up and I think I'm going to cut back my courgettes just to see what we're dealing with down there because I really do want to look after the leeks that they're squashing. Okay let's get cracking. Okay, I was absolutely ruthless and I just pulled up the three courgette plants. Now, in fairness, I think 
we got like the most of the courgettes that we were going to eat off them so at least that kind of frees up a little bit of space in the corner of the bed there to be honest like as well when I first planted them I didn't give them enough space so I know for next time that one little square will do one plant and then I think whenever we harvest the corn I will have a half a bed there to plant more stuff and I'm thinking I'm going to do onions and garlic okay I think my final job of the day is to take more seeds off of the sweet peas so I know I showed these in last week's video but that one I don't know if you can hear it's crispy that's brown it's ready to go whereas this one is green not quite ready so usually you'll find the brown ones at the bottom that's where the seed pods will start turning we have a good few that's what I'm gonna do my mission is because I bought so many seeds last year I want to save as many as I can for next year just to save money you know yourself because if you are a gardener if you're a new gardener or an older gardener more established I mean or more experienced you'll know how expensive it can be so I want to save as many seeds and uh, propagate that's what I want to learn how to do with the lavender over there but I think that will be next week's video but that's a nice little harvest of seeds now this one probably could have done with being left on but I'm gonna keep those inside let them dry out fully and then put them in an envelope label them for next year it's the next day and I completely forgot to take the seeds from my cosmos yesterday now I totally could have done with deadheading these earlier and the same with this pot too um because if you deadhead them they'll flare more but um if you don't and you let them go to seed all of the energy will go to making up the seed so i'm just going to show you so this one here oops this one here is ready see the way it's dry and the seeds are like nice and brown whereas this one you can see the seeds are green so i probably will cut off some it's like loads there we can use um to save for next year and then i'm gonna save the seeds from these poppies i got these as part of a press i think it was a press drop or it was an event with loxitan and leonie cornelius i will link her her instagram below sent us out seeds from her own garden and these were pink poppies when the leaves go the poppy heads stay green but i don't know if you can see oops at the top there see the very very top there there's a little hole so i'm going to be able to shake those poppy seeds out and hold on can you hear them oh. so we are going to get a lot of seeds i think there's something like 600 seeds per seed head so gonna save loads give loads away and we're gonna have poppies galore this or next spring look at these so all these cosmoses cosmoses is that the plural <laughs> from this pot here and that pot down there are from last year's seeds got loads of them but yeah i totally need to deadhead them but like i love that there's a mix like this one this one so if you're looking to kind of i suppose save like a couple of euro anyway you might as well let some of them go to seed so that you can save a few bob okay let's get saving some seeds mm -hmm. 